What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to episode number 29 of the Fanboys Anonymous Group Meeting Podcast. I am your host, Tony Mango, and with me on the panel tonight is Alex Grimley. Yo, yo, yo. So, before we get started, let me apologize for how I sound. <laughs> Not only am I sick, I'm also super tired because this award ceremony went on for fucking ever, didn't it? God damn it. <laughs> I think it went a half, uh, half hour past what it was supposed to. I mean, you know, it's every single year. You think by now they have some kind of system figured out to shorten the damn thing. Like cut out that first half hour, the red carpet bullshit? <laughs> Or just eliminate all these ridiculous short film posts. (laughs) Just to put them in the, uh, the, like, here, let's rush and do this kind of thing, you know what I mean? You know, get them all up on stage at one time. This is this year's short film winners. You didn't see any of the movies. You never will. Thank you. Have a great night. Be like, all right, well, these are the short films, so we're going to make this short. (laughs) We're going to (laughs) be... In the spirit of the following films, we're going to make these awards short. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this meeting has been a call to order, and if you haven't figured it out already from the title and what we're talking about and whatever like that, we're going to be reviewing the 2016 Oscars, a.k.a. the 88th Academy Awards. Again, I apologize about this nasally sound that you're going to be hearing throughout the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first off, uh, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Oscar's so white. Chris Rock's the host. You knew he was going to talk about it. And he talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. I think there might have been like three jokes the entire night that weren't about this. Right. I mean, for all this hype about Oscar's so white, they were decidedly not white. <laughs> I mean, I think it was a little false advertising there. I, I expected to see just a whitewashed ceremony with, you know, but it seemed like, yeah, race was on everybody's mind and all the speeches, most of the comedy all night. And if it wasn't that, it was, let's try to do another thing. Let's, uh, which, you know, they've done that in the past, so it's not really too surprising, but we get people talking about climate change, we get people talking about, uh, rape and right and it's just like oh man like i'm supposed to be watching these movies to kind of like have an escape a little bit like yeah i mean fucking depressing (laughs) seriously and i mean in these polarized political times i I was very disappointed is there a republican academy awards that i can tune into to balance this out (laughs) well apparently we got into some politics today from joe biden popping up (laughs) I thought for sure when the vice president of the United States of America introduced Lady Gaga and then she played her song with a grand finale featuring the sexual assault survivors chorus of Los Angeles. She was a shoe in for the best original song Oscar. What an upset. <laughs> Maybe that's why she was crying at the end. <laughs> she, knew she wasn't going to win. Didn't end, you know? Oh, man. That was one of my biggest surprises of the night for sure. Yes. Both the idea that she didn't win and the idea that Joe Biden popped up. And I love his quote, I'm the least qualified man here tonight. <laughs> right. One of the only situations he he would have the opportunity to say that. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of some other things that stood out to me. Um, I thought that the opening was kind of flat. Didn't seem like a lot of people were really laughing all that much. Yeah, I mean, it was understated. I mean, I think... I prefer like a stand up routine than I did over last year's song and dance routine with um Neil Patrick Harris. So I liked, you know, how sober Chris Rock was, you know, dealing with the controversy about it, but I think like you say, it didn't seem to catch on too much with the audience. I think people were nervous to laugh or when to laugh. Yeah. Like especially the white people in the audience. They were just kinda like, I don't know if I can laugh. <laughs> No, and especially when I loved when Chris Rock said, he said, these aren't, you know, the racists and racists in Hollywood are not the racist you've grown up accustomed to. He said they're like sorority racists. <laughs> and basically he was saying everyone is in Hollywood is liberal and some of them are racist, liberal racists, not something we hear every day. And I love how he pointed out uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. He's like, well, you weren't invited <laughs> Right. The only people that tell someone to boycott is people who don't have a job. 
And he, uh, a lot of people are saying that Will Smith, it's not fair that he wasn't nominated for concussion. It's also not fair that he's paid so much for Wild Wild West. Yeah, right. He paid $20 million for Wild Wild West. No one was up in arms about that. <laughs> How awkward was it when Stacey Dash came out? Oof. That went over like a lead balloon. Yeah. Nobody was buying that one. But I did like, probably my favorite joke of the whole night from uh, Chris Rock was the Jack Black joke. Because I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> yeah. Some of his jokes were pretty elaborate. Like that one went on a while before they finally hit the punchline of Jack Black. And some of them were awful. Like that Girl Scout routine. Yeah. Like five segments of fucking Girl Scouts. Yeah, those running gags they do. Like Neil Patrick Harris did one last year too where it was like a running gag all through the show. Do you remember what I'm talking about? And Ellen. She oh, did yeah. Something. With... She was awful. Right, yeah, the selfies and the pizza. Yeah. I liked the appearance by Suge Knight. I thought that, that was, was funny. <laughs> I mean, he, he spent the majority of the sixty-five grand. <laughs> oh, pretty brutal to pick on a guy in prison, overweight, diabetic. You know, and they give him cookies, they put him in shackles. <laughs> I thought a little dark, but very funny. So, I mean, uh, I think he did a good job. Overall, it could have been better. It could have been worse. I think it was a weird situation. Like he couldn't not address this, especially considering his position in the comedy world and everything. But I really would have appreciated a little bit less of it too. Like my favorite part about the Oscars are when they stop doing the political bullshit and they actually talk about fucking movies. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I feel like in the past couple of years, too, it's just gotten so over the top. Like, everybody that wins an award, it seems like, uses it as an opportunity to stump for some kind of issue that matters to them or spin their film into actually being about some pressing social issue. Right. Um, it's just a bummer, you know? Yeah, because it's like, well, if you're going to do that, then I don't want to listen to your speeches anymore. Right. And I just want to know who wins. And if I just want to know who wins then I could just not watch the Oscars and I could just check out the list tomorrow. Right. I could take three minutes instead of three and a half hours right. to check out the situation. Yeah, because it's like, if I'm going to watch something like this for, say, the musical performances, I can listen to the songs. And if I want to watch it for a comedy routine, I'll put on a fucking comedy act. Right. right? So, I don't know. But I do think, uh, like... Out of everybody's jokes throughout the entire night, for sure, Chris Rock didn't even have my favorite joke out of everybody. That was uh, Ryan Gosling. We have two Academy Awards between us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That one was actually really good. I, I like that a lot. Any, like, uh, presenters that stood out to you? I liked um, Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> when he came out talking about... Um, the little yellow people with tiny dongs and there was like audible sh sighs and you know like screams in the audience before he says you know i'm talking about minions <laughs> got them it's a shame he wasn't talking about those little kids that fucked up their uh their cue <laughs> oh man oh uh, i don't want to know what's going to happen to them after the oscar show you know the priests are going to get to them. <laughs> Oof, i mean it's just yeah they fucked up really bad <laughs> Give, take them up to Boston. Take them up to the spotlight priests. Forget it. <laughs> uh, two kids that actually did a pretty decent job overall, though. Jacob Tremblay and uh, the other kid. I don't remember his name. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny that they put the little stands for them to sit on or stand on because they couldn't reach the fucking microphone. <laughs> yeah, I got nervous when I saw how short the, the one yeah. So are they gonna are they gonna lower the microphone when the other kid's done talking? What's going to go on here? Yeah, is he gonna jump up or is the other kid gonna pick him up, put him on his shoulders? <laughs> and then even when they put the um platforms out for the kid to stand on, he was too far from the mic. He couldn't get close yeah. to it. That kid should have been nominated. He was Finally, so good in that movie. Uh going through a list of some notes that I have here. I thought it was funny, uh the winner for best costume design. Spoiler alert, Mad Max. Uh, 
she starts it off with what another lovely day, which is like one of the catchphrases of the movie. What a lovely day. And I was just kind of mm. like, ah, I get it. It's from the movie. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I also took a couple notes on her. Uh, she was an interesting winner. She was, she looked a lot like another Australian Oscar winner. I'm talking about Peter Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> You notice that? I mean, Poor that woman. <laughs> I don't know. No, she was funny. She get went up there and her speech, she was thanking people. And I thought it was going to set a good precedent for the night because she says, and I wrote it down. She says, she got to the end of her thanks and says, now I just want to say one more serious thing. Immediately the music started going. I was like, yes, <laughs> you're off stage. She went ahead anyway. Yeah. Well, the, in your Ritu, they just gave up. Yeah. Well, it's like, come on, man. It's like, it's the best director. It's like one of the three top awards or four top awards, and they're going to play the music underneath them. Ah. Still, it's kind of funny that it's just kind of like, hey, can you hurry up? No? Uh, well, okay. Then. <laughs> All right, we lose. <laughs> Imagine if they played, like, heavier music. Like, they, you know, they come in with the orchestra. He keeps going. They put on Pantera or something. Yeah, Metallica. <laughs> Get them though. Get them off. He still is just kind of like, nope, nope. Gonna keep no, talking. No uh, let's start uh break down some of the uh, awards here. Uh, let's breeze through a couple of these. Best short film goes to Stutterer. Eh. Okay, yeah, about great. It, yeah. yeah, it was great. Uh, best foreign language film, Son of Saul. Sure. Yep. If it's about the Holocaust, it's gonna win. <laughs> Best short documentary goes to A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness. Mm, another social issue film. Uh, documentary feature goes to Amy for Amy Winehouse. Mm-hmm. I got that one wrong. That's one of the four that I got wrong. And I tried to predict it. Uh, I went with What Happened to Miss Simone. Interesting. Didn't see any of these, of course. Neither did I. But I had heard nothing of any of these movies listed on any of these four categories. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the only thing I had heard was one person, Mark Bernard on uh fat man on Batman was like, Oh, I saw what happened to Miss Simone. Really good. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess that wins. That'll be your nominee. And it didn't. Oh, and another one that I didn't even bother predicting best animated short goes to bear story. Yeah. I wonder if that's about that bear from the Revenant. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> you know, listen, he was, re- he was seriously mistreated during the making of that film. And these filmmakers just wanted an opportunity to tell his story, show someone who's from the margins, you know, and give this bear his time in the sun. You know, it's been so, a real shame that like Andy Serkis has never been nominated for any of the stuff that he's done because it's motion capture. And in the uh, beginning footage of this, they were talking about, try to replace different people with black actors, black actresses. They take Leslie Jones and they replace the, the bear with Leslie Jones. Bear doesn't get any credit whatsoever. <laughs> Just terrible. Just ter- <laughs> another example of big cinema knocking the bears. The little <laughs> I can see the hate comments coming in already. <laughs> I'll have to apologize on Twitter tomorrow morning. <laughs> You'll have to make up Twitter account first. Uh, best animated feature goes to Inside Out. Of course. What, was anybody expecting anything different whatsoever? <laughs> I didn't even hear about uh, Boy in the World and when Marty was there. No, me neither. I hadn't heard of any of the other four. Show the Sheep I had heard was actually pretty decent. And Anomalisa I didn't really know all that much about. I'm looking now at the list and it says it was called Sean the Sheep Movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really trust movies that have movie in the title of the movie. <laughs> Superman the movie. Huh. <laughs> Jaws movie. <laughs> Scary the, movie. The Godfather movie. <laughs> it's great. Uh, best sound editing and best sound mixing both went to Mad Max Fury Road. Practically everything went to Mad Max Fury yeah, Road. Yeah, any of the te- a lot of the technical awards Mad Max scooped up. I mean, I think like virtually all of them. And incidentally, for the two sound awards, I had The Revenant winning both of them. I mean, that was one of the most striking things to me when I saw that film in the theater was the natural sounds, wind blowing, snow falling, rivers running. All these sounds were captured so beautifully and you felt immersed in the film. 
I ho- hoped it would prevail, but Mad Max, the Mad Max steam train just took all of them. I figured that that was a guarantee. Uh, a lot of people thought that Star Wars would have won that, and I was like, you know what? Star Wars won that shit in the past. Mad Max is like this uh, being held for like a, a savior of a film type of thing. They're going to go with that more than anything. And the sound was good. I mean, from what I fucking know about sound, I don't know shit. <laughs> so, right, right. I, mean, I still think that there's no need for both of these to be a category. It seems to me like best sound editing slash mixing would make sense, but... You know. Right, best sound. Yeah, best sound design. There you go. You know, it was funny. They played the um, the clips of the films nominated for sound editing, and when they showed them, they took out all the dialogue and all the music so that all you would hear is the sound effects. And it was sort of interesting, but every single film that was nominated, all the sounds were just gunshots and explosions. Yeah, for the most part, except for uh, I think one of them. Uh, what was it? It was um. No, it wasn't Sicario. It wasn't um. I think it was. And uh, Bridges Spies Price. actually, that was a gunshot one. Yeah. Yeah. So they all, it was all gunshots. Apparently, that's all it takes. I guess technically the Martian, they didn't have any gunshots in that one. That was just like... Like there were the explosions. Storm, yeah. Uh, speaking of the other sound categories we had here, we had uh, Best Original Song went to Writings on the Wall uh, from Spectre. Congratulations, a Bond film, finally. Yeah, and fucking Skyfall should have won <laughs> right, instead of this. Right. I do like Writings on the Wall, but it's not anywhere near as good as some of the other Bond themes. No, for sure. And I mean, what an upset, too. I think, you know, Lady Gaga, hot off the Golden Globe Award, I thought was definitely a shoe-in here. Mm -hmm. If I would have, like, been shady with the way that I was uh, doing my predictions, I would have changed my prediction. And I was so tempted to, like, try to justify it in my mind of, like, well, technically I died to do it before they said it. Like, And I was just like, I can't do that or whatever. No, no. And I had writings on the wall down as just, like, I know this song did well on the, the charts and I know nothing about the other ones. And shit, I ended up doing that. Surprisingly, though, lots of Bond songs tonight. Yeah, I mean, you counted, I think, five or six of them total. It was wild. Yeah, Goldfinger, Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, Diamonds Are Forever, Writings on the Wall. It was just like, now you pay attention to Bond? <laughs> what the fuck? It's about time. 30, 40 years too late. Yeah. I guess they decided that they've used the, the E.T. theme too much and uh, a couple of the standard bearers like that. Although they did do a lot of the same ones that they normally do. Ride of the Valkyries. Uh, I heard Superman. I heard uh, a couple of other John Williams kind of things. Right. We have uh, Best Original Score goes to The Hateful Eight. I hated it. I'm surprised you had such a strong reaction to it. I mean, it wasn't a bad score by any It was threat. so annoying. <laughs> like, that yeah. movie, that was the my least favorite part about that movie. Anytime yeah. that the music would swell up and it was just like this obnoxious background chatter. Ugh. It was funny. I mean, I'm, I usually pay attention to the movie music, you know what I mean, when it's distinctive and... All through Hateful Eight, it didn't make any impression on me at all. And I mean, do you? What do you think, Tony? Do you think this was a like, you know, the Oscars finally giving Ennio Morricone oh, an overdue award? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I thought it was a guarantee that he would win. And I, I don't even know, like, what the score for Carol or Sicario is because I haven't watched those movies yet. I don't really plan on watching Carol. Sicario looks kind of interesting, but... Sicario was great. Sicario was one of my favorite movies of the year, just incidentally. Bridge of Spies, I didn't actually remember any of it. And Star Wars, I thought, was horribly overrated from a lot of people. That was the worst Star Wars score we ever had so far. I know, and it's such a shame. I mean, like, Episode One, um, which I don't think is anyone's favorite Star Wars film, at least introduced, like, new themes, really memorable... Yeah, Damn. Duel of the Fates is fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. And even just like, you know, that, like, ba ba da da ba 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 da 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 like that, that kind of shit, I remember those themes. I don't remember anything from The Force Awakens except for Ray's theme. And the only reason I remember that is because it stood out so much to me as this sounds more like Lord of the Rings. Right. So... I was kind of glad that Star Wars didn't win because maybe that'll give them like a kick in the ass to actually like put more work into it the next time. Yeah, let's make a real score here. Come on, the bar yeah, yeah. high. Star Wars. Don't uh, 
make the Star Wars scores as if you were somebody trying to be John Williams. Be John Williams. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it must be hard for John Williams. I mean, he's written like, I think he writes one out of every three movie scores these days, <laughs> you know, him or Thomas Newman. Um, you know what's and they weird, also... though? What? I've noticed recently, more so than anything else, certain people, of course, like, you know, they've got their sound. Like, Thomas Newman, you you could tell it's the Thomas Newman thing. Hans Zimmer, it's exactly the same in every fucking thing, like that kind right. of thing. I do love Hans Zimmer, though. I don't take it the wrong way like that. Recently, though, I've been noticing, I've been listening to some other John Williams scores and going, oh, that's exactly the same as, uh, like, Battle of Heroes, except he changed, it goes up instead of down. Right. You know? Like, uh, Hook is very reminiscent of a lot of Star Wars things. Interesting. And it's much, much more memorable than anything that happened in The Force Awakens. Yeah. He's got to be close to out of music at this point, John Williams. I would imagine. And you know what? If he is, like, kind of too tired, too dumb with it to really push himself too hard or whatever like that, he deserves the fucking break. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I would love to have seen more continuity between the um, original trilogy scores and the music in this m- most recent one. I mean, I was surprised that I don't think they recycled anything. Did they? Not much. Uh, Leia's theme and, uh, the force theme. That's about it. So that's kind of surprising. Yeah. What else we have here? Uh, best makeup and hairstyling goes to Mad Max Fury Road. No surprises there. Although I got that one wrong. I just went with the whole, this seems kind of weird that they pulled this one out of their ass. The hundred year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared. It has to be that one then, right? <laughs> right. Never heard of it. Never at all. So not always the good idea to pick the odd one out. Uh, best costume design goes to Mad Max Fury Road. Kind of happy that I went to that. Cause I always think it's ridiculous when something like Cinderella wins. Cause it's just like, well, okay, you did something elaborate. Does it make it better? It's just a fancy dress. Right. You know? Or something like Carol. It's like, well, you've got all the shit already done for you for the most part. You just have to look at some actual photos from that time period. Yeah. Or um, that Danish girl where they, they they fashioned the, what was it, a man into a lady? Mm-hmm. And it's like, all you got to do is take him to, I don't know. JC Petty, tell him what, try stuff on and see what fits. Right. Take it in. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to H&M. <laughs> we got, uh, what's the name of that, that, um, Leslie, what is it? Nielsen. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. That, that woman's clothing store, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, um, oh man. I know what you're talking about. We clearly would not be good Danish girls. We don't... <laughs> no, no, no. I'd have a lot of work to do. But, you know, speaking of the Danish girl, I just want to say that it was so inspiring. And um, I'm being serious here. After last year, um, it was just so inspiring to me to see that Eddie Redmayne is standing tall and fully recovered from that awful (laughs) illness that he was battling last year. He looked so great tonight. So on a positive note, congratulations, (laughs) Eddie Redmayne. Oh, what else we have? We have best production design goes to, surprise, surprise, Mad Max Fury Road. No uh, shocker in that one. Best cinematogra- uh, cinematography goes to The Revenant. Yeah, congratulations, Chico Lubezki. Chico? That's it, or um, Chivo, his nickname. Oh, uh, never knew that. Three years in a row he's won. Really? Three years Shit. in a row. Gravity, and then Birdman, and now The Revenant. Wow. I know, it's unprecedented. Three wins in a row. Well, there's the hat trick. Shit. I mean, he might as well retire. I mean, what what more to do now? He's going to retire, and John Williams will still be around. <laughs> right, right. They deserved it, though. Revenant was so good with the cinematography. Oh, like, it was one of the most beautiful films I've seen in quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I'm really happy with that one. Visual effects. This was a big surprise to me. Ex Machina won. Wow, yeah. I thought that was going to Star Wars. I had predicted Star Wars as well. Yep. 
And I figured if not Star Wars, you got Mad Max, you got Man. The Martian, you got The Revenant. Like, <laughs> Well, The Revenant was curious. I mean, really, yeah. the only thing was the bear. That's true. I mean, in terms of visual effects. I, you know, and I, I thought, I had predicted Star Wars, but I thought deep down that maybe The Revenant would get it um, just as a sort of consolation prize because the bear was snubbed for Best Supporting Actor. <laughs> it did win bear story, though. Right, right. That wasn't a total loss. <laughs> if it would have been bare visual effects instead of best visual effects. He would have been, yeah, totally. It would have been just uh, He would have been at least the front runner. Oh, definitely. Definitely. He would have swept the award season. Bare <laughs> visual effects. And I mean, Ex Machina, I, I really liked Ex Machina a lot. So I recommend it to a lot of people. I wish that, that would have been nominated for, like, best picture. Really? But the visual effects for it, I was just like, well, obviously it was good. Because they needed to take somebody and make her look like a robot, but it was only one thing. Like Star Wars was like, you got to make up an entire planet with ships flying around, lasers and explosions and all this other kind of stuff. Like you think, like I, I guess it's more it's more quality over quantity. I don't know. Yeah, quality over quantity. I think you're right. I mean, it seems like you know the there's no limit to what can be done with. CGI and visual effects these days it's almost as if like the win for Ex Machina was like you say um, more about the subtlety of it you know than just the sheer fantastical you know non-stop CGI in, in a film like Star Wars and it might actually help have helped it that it only had that one thing to focus on because mm -hmm. it was just like yeah I, I believe that one thing instead of just well of course these spaceships aren't real you know right so I can see that being the case. Either one, kind of happy that X Machina got something because it was cool. Best film editing, I was a little bit surprised. I I put Mad Max on my predictions, and it was just more of a hunch than anything. Right. I thought it was going to go to Big Short though. I yep. We both. I think that's the one we talked about as they were reading the nominees. Yep. Both of us said we should have changed it to Big Short. I mean, if and I guess. Yeah, so Big Short was virtually shut out. It one adapted screenplay we'll get to in a minute, but film editing seemed like it would be the main contender if Big Short was going to win anything. It would have been editing. Right. So I'm a little bit surprised, even though I technically got it right. <clears throat> but uh, I wasn't really too impressed with a lot of them, so, meh. You know? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, best Adapted Screenplay, Big Short. Kind of saw that one coming. Right. Well-deserved. You know, yeah. really complex story. Lots of intricate details. Um, I you wasn't know, too impressed. You were <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to make a um, an event like the 2008 financial crisis, which it's so complex, so many different sort of strands um, – not only like the the people in the film, the different sort of you know characters who were dealing with th this situation, but the actual products and and you know stocks and bonds and things that are being sold and how these things work. The film does a great job in explaining all of this, making it accessible uh, to people coming in off the street. So it's a hell of a feat, you know. I think that was a well deserved award there. I wonder how many people read the original works though. Yeah, good call. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more inclined to read, um, personally, a nonfiction thing like The Big Short than I would be, you know, a novel like Brooklyn or Carol, say. Best original screenplay goes to Spotlight. I, if you talk about things I wasn't impressed with, Spotlight's one of them for sure. I don't get it. I mean, I, th I think it went over my head, that film. I just – I watched it. I was there. I paid attention. I went in thinking it would be a cool procedural, you know, all the president's men type right. journalism movie. But, I, you know, and I heard people say, well, it's very understated. And I think that's like a like – a, like a symbol word for low energy. Like <laughs> it didn't uh, – you know, I sat there for two and a half hours, however long it was, and I I wasn't on the edge of my seat at all. Nothing seemed complex. The characters, motivations, everything was really clear. Uh, just a very bland kind of film. Yeah, one might say, instead of understated, that it's just basic. Right. Like, yeah, oh, it doesn't try anything. There's no, like, it's just, here is... Uh, 
I mean, like, I haven't read the screenplay. I don't know what the translation was from that to screen. But it seems like it was just kind of like, guy reads newspaper. Guy says, oh, we got to do something about this. And then they talk some more. And whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, we'll get a little bit more into Spotlight in a minute or so. Uh, best Supporting Actress goes to Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl. Should have been for Ex Machina. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But I'm not too shocked on that one. Yeah, no, that one caught me by surprise. I thought Kate Winslet had that. I really was hoping that she wouldn't win. Uh, Winslet, actually, you know what? Like, I didn't see Carol, so I can't talk about Rudy Mara. Jennifer Jason Lee, I thought was all right. Rachel McAdams and Kate Winslet, though, I didn't say anything special. Like, Not Winslet it. was just, like, bitchy, kind of, and Rachel McAdams was just staring at somebody and nodding her head. <laughs> yeah, Rachel McAdams, I mean, again, the mo- the most generous thing you could say is understated, you know, yeah. and that would be like... Uh, but no, I mean, Kate Winslet played that sort of frazzled, bossy, ready to take control. You know, it's like a, it's like a um, confident woman role, like capital C, capital W, confident woman role. Uh, that the Oscars seem to want to, you know, like last year's winner, um, who was it, Patricia Arquette for Boy- Boyhood? Yeah, that's true. Maybe everybody should just do that in the future. Although it didn't work for uh, our best actress with uh, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Oof. But thankfully Brie Larson won that one. I thought she was great in Room, so I'm happy for her. Yeah, I haven't seen Room, but certainly all the buzz going in was it seemed like she was favored to win it. I would recommend Room, actually. I thought that that was actually a pretty decent movie. Charlotte uh, Rampling uh, gave a really phenomenal performance in 45 years, but shot herself in the foot uh, leading up to the Academy Awards by um, commenting on the Oscar So White controversy. She, man, she took out the wrong position on that issue. Well, she's going to have to just step it up in her sequel follow-up, 46 years. <laughs> yeah. 45 years a slave. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't know how to pronounce this woman's name, but the girl from Brooklyn, apparently it's, like, Swarsha or something? I don't know. Is it Irish? Is it Scottish? I always thought it was, like, Ceres or whatever like that. It's just how it's spelled. But everybody's like, Swarsha, <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, I don't trust, you know, because the way J.J. J. Abrams pronounced, he said, in a I thought, okay, these are not <laughs> reliable pronunciation guides. Oh, either way, they're still better than anything that fucking John Travolta says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell <it> to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then the next year they actually brought up Adele Dazim. Yeah, then he starts groping her face. <laughs> oh, my God. He's creepy as hell. Yeah, talk about a weirdo. <laughs> uh, best Supporting Actor went to Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies. I called that one after I saw the movie. Who? I had heard a little bit about it beforehand, and I was like, Mark Rylance? Who the fuck is this? Hey, my question exactly. Who is this guy? I've never heard of him. And then I watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, damn it. He's so winning this. I mean, not that I was, like, pissed about it or anything like that. I thought it was really, really good. Was uh, it an oscar Beatty movie or role? Sort of. I mean, he's playing a Russian spy in, yeah. like, the Cold War. So, yeah, I have that kind of edge. I still think Tom Hardy should have won, though. Yeah, Tom Hardy was great. This was a strong category this year. Um New York Times, uh, in their Oscar predictions, uh, suggested Sylvester Stallone would get a sort of late career nod for Creed. A lot of people thought that Stallone would win. I kind of figured, though, that they had the philosophy, the nomination's good enough. Right. Just like, we acknowledge that you were good, but you weren't that good, dude. Like, you know? Yeah. And you I still have done this eight fucking times. Seriously, he got beat by the Russian. I mean, I think that, or did he beat the Russian? No, he beats the Russian. Okay. I think also that... It proves that we could change. We could all change. I think they had to have been worried about what happens if he wins and goes up there and tries to give a speech, you know? <laughs> well, I want to talk to you. It would have been really ugly. <laughs> He's like, for all the people that didn't win, it's not about bad. You lose. How much you can get back up and win next year? 
I'm gonna uh, later tonight. I'm I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna drink about half a dozen eggs. <laughs> we have terrible impressions of Stoy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's uh, better than my Tom Hardy that I did for the Revenant review. <laughs> Can we hear some of that? Uh, now that I'm sick, it's gonna be even worse. But the whole like uh, pelts. <laughs> <laughs> pelts. We're gonna find them pelts. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been cool with him winning, though. But Rylance was cool, so... Uh, I, I thought, at the very least, that Bale and Ruffalo had no chance. Why Christian Bale no chance? I mean, that was a very understated performance. <laughs> well, if he was not so understated, he should have been in Spotlight instead of Ruffalo. <laughs> you know, he could have been used there, yeah. And Ruffalo was just kind of like, I'm kind of mad. This kind of sucks. I like this. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really, like, for all the fireworks and his performance in Spotlight, it seemed really controlled, really contrived. I, I wasn't, I didn't, again, it went over my head, it didn't hit me, I, I didn't get it, you know. Something about the film just remained distant from me. Yeah. And of course, uh, throw it out there for the people that are thinking, oh, could you do any better? Fuck no. no <laughs> I'm not a better I'm, actor. I'm not an actor, I'm not being paid $15 million to do it better. Yeah, I'll I'll gladly take a fifteen million dollar check to try, but well, I'll tell you what, Jennifer Lawrence on American Hustle, um, she made twelve point five million to Bradley Cooper's fifteen million. She was so upset about it, she had to write uh, a blog post on Lena Dunham's blogs talking about gender inequality. Well, she's probably going to be really pissed if she lost her Best Actress award this time. Oh, but I mean, imagine twelve point five million. That's just sad. It's just so. Li- yeah. I mean, I'd be very upset too, right? I mean, how are you supposed to live on that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, honestly, I think it's just disgusting, frankly. <laughs> Best actor goes to, finally, Leonardo DiCaprio. Finally, indeed. The uh, big story of this Oscar ceremony outside of the Oscar so white thing clearly went to Leonardo DiCaprio. And I don't even think that this is his best role he's ever had. But it was like one of those Lifetime Achievement Award kind of things. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it was – I read a, an interesting article. I forget where, um, maybe on like Vulture.com or something. But they said they were afraid the precedent that Leonardo DiCaprio's Oscar win sets because he's not really acting. It's just an endurance test, you know? <laughs> like, that is true. It, yeah, like it was just – and they talked about how, like, it, it kind of started with Raging Bull when De Niro put on 60 pounds or whatever it was. And, like, these these grueling physical challenges and physical transformations that actors take on. It's not like old school 1970s, you know, Al Pacino sitting in a suit looking at the ground in Godfather 2. It's not that kind of acting. It's more like, you know, gymnastics of a sort. I could see that. And it eventually pays off, too. After all these years of him actually doing flat-out, full-on acting without that kind of stuff, he ends up braving in harsh weather, and they're like, okay, now we're going to give it to you. Exactly. I mean, he, in my opinion, his best role, or the, the I haven't seen everything, obviously, that he's in, but the most memorable role I've seen him in was uh, in Glorious Bastards. DiCaprio? I'm sorry, I get mixed up. Uh, Django Unchained. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm like, are you talking about Fassbender? Because Fassbender was good for Steve Jobs, but in in Django Unchained, as he was great, racist, yeah, disgusting slave owner. He was so believable. And if you want to talk about an endurance test and all that, actually cuts his hand. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, give him the award for cutting his hand. He's like, nah, I gotta pair up with that bear. That'll give me. The... <laughs> yeah, right, right. What's that bear doing this year? Is is his schedule free? You know, you're only as good as your scene partner. <laughs> well, they say the key to acting. I don't know if you know this. You know what makes a good actor? A reactor. There you go. <laughs> so the bear gave um, Leo quite a lot to work with. You know, as a it... 500 pound brown bear. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, we almost at his match. He almost gave him too much to bear. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure came to bear on Leo. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, another bear pun. I can't think of any other. <laughs> <laughs> it about 10 minutes here. <laughs> uh, best director goes to Alejandro G. Iñárritu. <laughs> Iñárritu. Boy, the Revenant. Uh, we kind of saw this one coming, right? Yeah, and I mean, definitely, he. I mean, well-deserved. I think he's 
a fucking original, amazing voice. You know, it's rare that um, someone who has such a, and I, I know this sounds fluffy, but like, you know, quite a distinct and uncompromising vision reaches that many people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, movies like we're talking about Spotlight that kind of just distill it down, make a broad kind of appeal. Um, the Revenant, and then we'll be forget forgotten in a year. Exactly, exactly. Revenant is a difficult movie. It's a tough movie, tough to sit through. It's not rewarding in the way I think a lot of people look for movies to be. Um, but there he was. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's a real accomplishment uh, and definitely a well-deserved award for Inurito. I was still kind of a little bit suspect, though, that George Miller would win. It, certainly it'll be his last opportunity to win. You would think so. Unless he, like, maybe he gets so much attention from this that they give him some crazy big budget type of, obviously not this specifically, but like a remake of Lawrence of Arabia kind of thing, you know what I mean? Right, given his specialty in deserts. <laughs> Uh, finally, we get to Best Picture, which goes to Spotlight, and uh, we talked about this a little bit already, but both of us just weren't into Spotlight, and I looked at this list in the past couple of years, I've been making it for about 10 years now, maybe a, a little bit more than that, actually, I've tried my best to watch almost every movie that's been nominated for the Best Picture Academy Award, and some of the other ones, too. And usually, lately, I haven't been able to do that. And it's not so much that I haven't been able to find the time or that I can't find, like, screeners online or go to the movies or whatever like that. It's usually that I have zero interest in watching them. And if I look at, like, the past couple of years, that was, like, I think last year in particular, I watched, like, one of them, and I didn't care what would win. This time, I actually watched... Every one of the ones that was nominated for Best Picture, except for Brooklyn, because that ain't fucking winning. <laughs> <laughs> and I replaced that with Ex Machina, because that was so much better and whatever. But I looked at this list, and I was like, you know what? Big Short, I wasn't too impressed with. Spotlight, really wasn't that impressed with. That was my least favorite out of all these. Bridge of Spies was alright. The Martian was not as good as I was hoping it would be. Ooh, The Martian, boo. The Revenant was... A good movie, but it was also the type of thing where if that wouldn't have won Best Picture and I, I would have loved one of these other ones, I would have been okay with it losing. Room I liked quite a bit, and I was surprised at how much I liked Mad Max. And I'm totally not Best Picture worthy, but I was like, shit, out of this list, like, my least favorite that I had seen was Spotlight, and it fucking wins. It wins. I mean, I think, like, so you're saying that you know, overall the quality just seems to have declined best picture nominees in the past couple of years. It's got to have to do with the fact that they're nominating like 12, 15, 30 films for best picture. Now, you know, it used to be five. If that wasn't, if it was a scenario where they were nominating eight movies or 10 movies or whatever, and the ones that were winning were great. And the ones that weren't were kind of shitty that I would think that, but the ones that are winning are the ones like Spotlight. Right. So yeah. if it was only five nominees, that would still get nominated, you know? Sure. It's a bad trend that, I mean, it, you know, no one, I don't think, goes to the Oscars as, like, the final judgment of what's good, you know, what were the best films of the year and what weren't, because most of the, you know, most of the films that I think are the best films of their respective year aren't on the Oscar radar at all. Um, a most violent year, which came out in 2014, no Oscar, you know, nothing on the Oscars. Inside Lewin Davis, another film from 2014, very little Oscar buzz. Night Moves from 2013, no Oscar buzz at all. Um, the best films, it seems, are just kind of being ignored, uh, while these bland, crowd-pleasing favorites like Mad Max and Spotlight work their way into Oscar glory. Well, I'm really surprised about Mad Max, because that's not the type of film that they usually nominate. Like, a lot of people, you know, I mean, you talk to different fans of different movies, and you get a wide range. Like, some people are like, well, a, a movie that's not like, um, like, The Artist is the only thing that's ever a good movie. Anything that's the slightest bit more mainstream is garbage, just by default. And then you get the other people that are like, oh, man. Fast Five should totally win Best Picture. Right. 
So you hear a lot of people that were like, well, Star Wars was the highest grossing movie of the year, of all time, basically. That should be Best Picture. And it's like, well, no, it shouldn't. And I would have been shocked if that one had been nominated. And I was really shocked about Mad Max being nominated. Right. Because I figured, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, they've been pretty open about the fact that the reason why they expanded the Best Picture category was to make room for these, you know, smash commercial hits um, that everybody loves, that everybody in America sees, with the hope that those folks will then turn it, you know, tune into the Oscars when they happen, you know? Right. Because 2000, for example, I think it was 2007, 2008, when No Country for Old Men, There Will Be Blood, uh, won a lot of top awards two amazing films some of the best films of that decade but no one saw them and no one watched the awards no one was interested in that year's oscars you know the ratings tanked yeah. um, so they're trying to bring in i think a different audience um and mad max i mean leading the charge it won the most you know it was the most awarded film this evening i, th- I think six or seven six out of the nine that it was nominated i think yeah, six Academy Awards. So it won more awards than The Godfather, you know, 2001 <laughs> A Space Odyssey, Citizen Kane. It's crazy. Well, what would you think if they would have kept this down to five, what the five nominees would have been? Obviously Spotlight. Yeah, Spotlight. Guaranteed. I think Spotlight, Revenant, Big Short. You know, Brooklyn, because it's a period piece, it's about a woman, I can see that. Right. Um, Those are the ones I would have gone with, and for the last one, I would have gone with probably Room over Bridge of Spies. Yeah, I think. And I not The Martian. Good. Not The Martian. The Martian was a surprise, and and it didn't win anything all night. You know. Yeah, it didn't win a single thing, and I don't even know if it necessarily should have. So. No, I well, I didn't care for it at all. Yeah, but like Matt Damon shouldn't have won Best Actor, and. I mean, like, the sound design, stuff like that, if it would have won, well, I wouldn't have been like, oh, this is a travesty, because I don't know shit about that. But, you know, if that would have won Best Picture, that would have been a huge shock to me, because it isn't. Although I did enjoy it more than Spotlight, I will say that. Right. So. <laughs> and it's interesting. I mean, it's kind of rare that um, the Best Picture and the Best Director go to different films. I think, the, I mean, I don't know when the last time it happened was, but the most memorable time for me was... In 2000, when Gladiator won Best Picture, but Steven Soderbergh took home the director Oscar for Traffic. Um, And a lot of times it's funny. It's like we all know, I think, that The Revenant was a better film than Spotlight, you know. And I think in this case, like, I don't know. How does it seem to you? To me, the director award, it's the more sort of um, it's the better indicator of the best picture of the year than Best Picture, because the best picture traditionally goes to like we talked about. You know, Dances with Wolves over Goodfellas. It goes to Annie Hall over Star Wars. You know what I mean? I could see them giving the edge to Spotlight because it's got a political message to it. Like, we'll give Best Actor and Best Cinematography and Best Director to The Revenant, and that'll prove that we like The Revenant. And then we'll give the screenplay and uh, Best Picture to Spotlight because... That's the one that's like, we're doing a social justice kind of thing, you know? Right. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting. Um, Inuritu, I mean, he went up there uh, when he was called for best director. I don't know. Did you hear? There were che- there was some cheering, but there was just as much sort of booing and jeering. Uh, and apparently, I mean, it seemed as though the audience was divided on whether or not Inuritu counts as a white guy or not. <laughs> So there was a little, a little confusion there. Uh, so, final tally: How many did you get right on your predictions? How many wrong? Um, I got fourteen correct, and the rest of them wrong. So ten wrong, fourteen correct. Yeah, not bad overall. Eh. You beat the you beat the fifty fifty spread. That's uh, ten wrong is not a good record. <laughs> It's not great. It's good. <laughs> I didn't predict three of them. The uh, animated short, documentary short, and short film. Because I was like, well, they're all shorts. I don't know. But I ended up getting four wrong and 17 right. The four I had gotten wrong were makeup and hairstyling, visual effects, 
best documentary feature and uh, spotlight for best picture because right. I just I figured The Revenant would win, and uh, I actually had spotlight up until like yesterday, and I changed it to The Revenant. Interesting, yeah. Because I was just like, Spotlight's going to win. It's the fucking political thing. And then I'm like, you know what, though? I could see this being a year where they just give it to the Revenant 2 and all that. And I was like, fuck. They shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, talking about, you, you know, yeah, the social justice sort of message of Spotlight definitely helped it out. But um, I was, you know, they did, did other films that were nominated for Best Picture had these sort of social messages. Um, the real life Mark Watney, for example, was in the audience tonight and while he was very disappointed to see The Martian lose this year's Best Picture Oscar, he's still very grateful uh, to be back on, on planet Earth. <laughs> Plus, he got to meet that bear backstage. You know. It was a good night for Mark Watt. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, uh, wrapping this up here, just overall thoughts. What do you think about next year, the direction that they should go? Because obviously, they're going to be doing a lot of different changes. They're going to try to make the the social issues are not going away or anything like that. And they could have really two reactions to this. They could either go the route where it's like, well, we addressed this all this year and next year we could kind of brush it all under the rug or th next year they could purposely end up kind of leading towards certain ways. Do you think we're going to end up doing that? Yeah. I think we're seeing the last, um, Oscar so white Oscars. I think there's going to be a very deliberate, yeah, concerted effort to make the Oscars more inclusive, more diverse. I think look for more social justice messages in Oscar years to come. Which, for the record, if somebody's good enough, no matter what race, no matter what gender, anything like that, then they deserve to win or not be nominated or whatever the case may be. But it will be annoying if we see either side. Either we get people that are like in the academy and they go, well, we need to we need to nominate more uh, black women. We need to nominate more Hispanic men. We need to whatever the case because we just should have them in there instead of that they're better. But we also shouldn't have those people that fight that again. They go, I I'm not going to vote for them. Why? Ah, because they are that. You know what I mean? It's right. There needs to be that that balance where everybody just goes, wait a minute, this isn't a political thing. This is supposed to be rewarding good movies. That's all and, it is. Yeah, you should – you can make jokes about things here and there. I mean obviously if like uh, you go through the whole Oscars thing next year and everybody who's nominated for Best Actor and Best Actress and supporting in, for both of those, if every single one of them is an Asian person – Make a joke about it and go, well, you know, not a whole lot of white people this year. And if they're all deserving of it, then awesome. Right. Great. But just don't get a little too crazy with it. You know what I mean? And at the very least, even if that does happen, I just think that that is going to end up hurting the quality of the show. Because, I mean, the biggest issue that we had tonight wasn't necessarily the idea that there, this was being brought up. It was just how often it was being brought up. Yeah. And how... You, you'd you think you'd get like a, a second to not have something like that. And then it was like, well, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about climate change. And it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I mean, somebody needs to get grab these multimillionaires and billionaires by the, you know, by the collar, or shake them and say, listen, your films are not solving, you know, world peace, climate right. change, hunger. You're making movies. No more, no less. You know, you're in the entertainment industry, not the fucking news. Exactly. Yes. The enter precisely <laughs> the entertainment industry. People stop mm -hmm. taking yourself so seriously. Yeah, there's a bigger cultural impact to what Star Wars did than what any of your speeches did tonight. <laughs> totally. <laughs> because people have decided, yeah, I'm going to go see Star Wars and it made a billion fucking dollars and, you know, whatever. Um, So... Who knows what will end up getting nominated next year. We have tons of movies coming out, of course, and I'm sure a lot of the Oscar bait films won't even pop up until December because that's what they always do. So the ones that we do know are coming out, all the comic book films and all that, you'll be popping up uh, in visual effects and sound mixing and all that kind of shit. Right. But it'll be interesting to see if this does go a different route. If we do have people like the George Millers out there getting more nominations and if we do get... Uh, some 
like fresh people at kind of like Eddie Redmayne last year, or Alicia Vikander this year, that kind of stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Either way, I'm sure we'll be paying attention to it. And uh, I guess that's it. Uh, anything else you want to bring up? I think that about does it. Alrighty, so thank you all for listening to uh, our review of this. Make sure you leave your comments below. Tell us what you thought of the Oscars, the performances themselves for this whole ceremony, the uh, list of, obviously, the winners. If you agree, disagree, you think certain things should have won and they didn't. Maybe you got some real strong opinions about uh, the fact that Ryan Gosling doesn't have one of those Academy Awards that should have gotten something away from Russell Crowe or something like that. Maybe you want to explain to us why the fuck Joe Biden was there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but leave those comments below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button on YouTube. Leave a positive review of us on iTunes and Stitcher if you are listening to us on there. And subscribe as well on whatever platform you're on. And keep checking out more stuff from fanboysanonymous.com. I don't know what we have coming your way next, depending on when you're listening to this, but we got more podcasts coming your way in March that are going to be covering a lot of different things, a lot of Batman v Superman things too. Uh, kind of group that all together. But we're going to cover Daredevil. We're going to cover some other things too. So uh, whatever you're interested in, keep checking out the channel and you never know what's going to pop up. So uh, as I said before, thank you all for listening. This group meeting is adjourned on behalf of not just Alex, but myself and all the fanboys and fangirls that couldn't be here tonight. We are all fanboys, no matter what the case is in the movie industry. And uh, that's it for Oscar season. So see you next time, everybody. Geeks out.